Hi, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Hannah Pearson, and I'm the Regional Director for APAC for the Adventure Travel Trade Association, the ATTA. And this afternoon, I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you about how we can reactivate travel through adventure. So let's get started. What is adventure travel? Now, when people think about adventure travel, this might be something that comes to mind, right? rafting it's super rainy it's tough it's gritty it could be you know this is example floating in ice it's testing yourselves to these extremes and, and seeing what your physical limitations are and yes that can be adventure travel but adventure travel for us at the ATTA is so much more it could be going for a hike exploring nature it could be taking an e-bike, riding through the city. It could be experiencing local food. It could be enjoying local indigenous cultures and that cultural interaction with locals. It could be relaxing in a hot spring in Hokkaido. So for us at ATTA, you can see that, you know, getting to know local wildlife even. For us, adventure travel has a very broad definition. Um, it encompasses three parts, nature, culture, and activity. And at the heart of that is adventure travel. So adventure travel doesn't mean you have to climb out of a mountain. It doesn't mean you have to jump out of a plane. Um, so long as you have some of these three elements involved, that's what we consider at the heart of it to be the experience of adventure travel. And by doing that, that makes it a lot more inclusive. Um, you are not excluding those people who do have physical limitations, who, who are less fit. And I'm not even necessarily talking about people who have greater accessibility needs, but you know, just the average person, you know, may, maybe I'm not as fit as somebody who wants to go climb up a mountain. And that's okay, I can experience adventure travel in my own way and have a really unique, engaging experience through that. And you can see, you know, the traveler's experience of adventure is all about that. It's about experiencing something unique. There is a challenge element, yes. It's about your overall wellness, the impact that you're having both on the environment and the local cultures as well. And there's sometimes an element of transformation within that as well, you know, going through this and how does that change you? How does that impact your, your views or your both you know, mentally and how does that impact you physically? Um, so there are a lot of elements within adventure travel. Now, I'll tell you a, very briefly about the ATTA. So the Adventure Travel Trade Association is the largest association in the world, made up of around 30,000 adventure travel professionals from all walks of the industry. So from destinations to tour operators, to travel advisors, to accommodation, to gear brands. And we advocate for the adventure travel industry and for, for the good that we see that adventure travel brings um, to the tourism industry. And this is something that I think the world is waking up to, this potential of adventure travel um, for, for being a force for good in the tourism world. I mean, this, this was a quote from uh, Taleb Rifai, who, you know, he said, it incorporates and promotes those values of tourism that we want, a tourism that respects cultural and natural assets and protects the most vulnerable. Um, and that's something that, you know, increasingly more and more governments are talking about. And I'll, I'll come to that in a few minutes. And so I wanted to share, you know, a few examples of trending adventure experiences, again, to show you that it isn't all hardcore adventure when we say adventure. It could be going for a nature walk, uh, with nature photography, hiking, going wildlife watching, um, going on a farm tour. And you know, agro-tourism we've seen in Southeast Asia uh, in the Mekong is becoming a lot more popular. It could be going and tasting and learning to cook that local cuisine. So for example, during our Adventure Travel World Summit in Lugano in Switzerland in October, the day, the first day of the conference, everybody goes on a day of adventure. Um, and these range, there's about 70 that, that the participants can, can choose from, right? There's a huge range. And they're from as diverse as jumping off a dam 
that was one of the options, you know, bungee jumping off this dam that James Bond has done in the films, to what I chose, taking a lovely cruise along Lake Lugano and finishing off learning how to cook a risotto from locals who, you know, been in this family house um, for generations. And that was my adventure. So it really, it, it encompasses everything from the hardcore to that soft adventure. But at the heart of it is experiencing the local environment and it's experiencing the local people as well. It's that interaction because of course, you know, you could essentially climb a mountain anywhere, right? You could climb a mountain in Nepal. You could go climb a mountain in Switzerland. What's going to be one of the differences? One of the main differences is going to be those people you meet. It's that interaction with the local culture, Um whether that's through food, whether that's um, through them sharing traditions, um, just sharing their daily life and, and their background, that's what makes the big difference. And I think that's what makes adventure travel um, very special. Now, adventure travel as a whole has huge potential. Um, it, it is not just lip service. We say, oh, it, it's good for the environment. It's good for the economy. It's, it's good for people. You know, these are the numbers that really show that. Um, so the adventure ad travel market and this was back in 2018 so it is pre-pandemic um was worth more than the cruise industry was worth more than the global textile market and is not far off the global prescription drug sales markets are so i'll move you can see 744 billion um it's a huge market um and a lot of potential for good and it has a greater impact on the local economy as well. Um, so, for example, generating $10,000 in the local economy takes you know, just four adventure travelers versus nine overnight package tourists versus many, 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 many more for cruise tourists. So it's quite a low impact um, form of tourism, but with a really high impact on the communities and on the local economies. Um, again, what we have found in surveys is that the money generated from adventure travel also stays within the community. Um, so typically 65% of revenue from adventure tourism remains in that country versus 14% for mass tourism. The same for jobs. Adventure tourism generates about 2.6 local jobs, mass tourism 1.5. And you can understand why you know, adventure travel is by its very nature, more high touch. You do need more people. It's not something that, you know, anybody can can go and do and necessarily do as an FIT. Um, so it supports that local economy. It supports local tourism stakeholders. And in fact, you know, towards the beginning of the pandemic, um, ATTA and Euromonitor um, collaborated and they actually found that adventure travel is likely to recover three to four years earlier than mass travel. Um, and this is exactly what we've seen and what I'm going to show you. More tourism ministers are talking about wanting quality tourists over quantity, looking for more sustainable forms of tourism, um, ecotourism, green tourism, and certainly adventure travel ticks all of those boxes. Um, so right here in, in Southeast Asia, this is a, a snapshot of some of the tourism ministers and what they have said. So Santiago Uno, the tourism and creative economy minister for Indonesia, has, has gone on record many times saying Indonesia is not pursuing number of tourist visits, but they want to encourage sustainable tourism. Um, Vietnam, talking again very recently, I think this was in uh, October, about smart and sustainable tourism development followed by green and responsible travel. This is a priority for them. Philippines, um, the new um, tourism secretary there, Christina Garcia Frasco, says as the tourism sector blooms again, we have the opportunity to rethink the impact this industry has brought. How can we make it more sustainable, inclusive, resilient? And that's what adventure travel contributes to. It really contributes to having this more sustainable tourism because, of course, without the environment that adventure travel happens in, there wouldn't be adventure travel. So it, it is really central to preserving that environment, adventure travel. So let's take a bit of a step back now and look at how are active travelers changing? What are the trends that is going on with adventure travel? Um, and what we have seen, you know, Inevitably, adventure travelers across the globe are different as markets reopen, and they're different depending on which source markets they're from. So they want to be on the road. They want to be active, but they're expecting technology to be a part of the experience. Now, they're, of course, hygiene is a non-negotiable. 
still pre- preference to be away from crowds, to be outdoors, physically re- active. And I think that's really just a reaction to, I think everybody is still like that, right? After we've been cooped up and confined to our homes for so long during the pandemic, I think it has made us really appreciate being outdoors, being active, moving our bodies. Um, and that's something that adventure travel presents. Now, every year, the ATTA do a survey of um, tour operators. We call it our tour operator snapshot survey. Um, and we ask them, what are your customers booking? What are the trends that you're seeing? And we can pile into report and release it. So this was released um, around the, the middle of this year. So, of course, the questions took place a little bit earlier in the year. But I think it's still very interesting. Um, so in terms of what's hot for high demand trips, it's all about custom itineraries. Um, it's about greener, sustainable, low impact itineraries. And in fact, a, a different survey, a study that ATTA did um, on US consumers found that US adventure travelers are significantly more likely to be making those environmental considerations um, just in their decision making process in, in daily life. So you can see, you know, 66% worried about climate change. Um, 81% believe that they can make a difference with their actions and choices. And, you know, in terms of their daily life, they're more likely to do things like recycle, to reduce plastic use, use sustainable packaging, um, looking at taking more public transport. And so what this means is that Adventure travelers are the kind of travelers that destinations want. That's one side of the coin. But the other side is that that means that destinations and tour operators need to be extremely careful when they are thinking about catering for adventure travelers because adventure travelers are not easily greenwashed. They will question, um, yes, but okay, you're you're saying you're sustainable, but now you're giving me this single-use plastic bottle. Um, you know, you when you are thinking about how to cater for them, you have to think about the whole supply system, the whole supply chain, because that's something that they will be wanting to know about, right? They are, they are extremely serious about that. So it's it's one thing, you know, for a destination to say, we're going after sustainable tourism, um, green tourism, and then another for them to say, oh, and, you know, we're also encouraging mass cruise tourism. How do those two sit with one another? Um, so that's always something to be aware of that, they are extremely um, conscious of ecotourism, of sustainability, and how that relates and their impact on that environment. Other high demand trips, we've got things like slow travel. Um, and again, I think this is a, you know, a, a reaction to the pandemic, but certainly that appreciation for really getting to know a place for exploring that. And again, you know, that contributes to the local economy there. Travelers are more likely to to visit off the beaten track that spreads that economic value and so on. So it, it's, you know, certainly a good impact, I think, from adventure travel. Domestic and regional travel, of course, that makes sense. We've, we've seen that everywhere, no matter what vertical. Um, it's all about exploring your own backyard. Um, but looking for remote destinations, wellness, um, electric bikes and that family multi-generational trips um again it's that connection isn't it i think that's what everybody has missed over the pandemic is that connection with loved ones and seeing now travel as an opportunity to be able to do that right to go to a new destination and connect with family but you can see it's interesting family and multi-generational for adventure travel perhaps you might not think that those necessarily go hand in hand you know who's going to bring their their kid um climb up a mountain or bring their elderly parents with them trekking in the jungle. Um, so this is what we mean by that soft adventure, right? To make it accessible for all. And there are ways of doing that. What are people's motivations for going on adventure travel? So definitely that search for new experiences. And I think that that's always been there to go off the beaten track, travel like a local, cultural encounters. Um, Yes, there is that symbol of, you know, adventure travel as a status symbol, number seven. There is that, you know, they want to show off. They want to be in some really amazing destination in a selfie or brought home some really unique souvenir. People say, hey, where did you get that from? Oh, I got it from the top of a mountain and uh, from this amazing monastery. You know, there is that, um, you know, that, 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 that's a motivation and, and it's not one to be knocked. Um, but you can see here there is a lot of around culture, right? Traveling like a local, 
cultural encounters, cultural experiences. So adventure travelers aren't in it just for the activity, but they really want to get to know a destination. They want to get to know a destination's heart, its people, its cultures, its traditions. Um, what about adventure activities themselves? What are adventure travelers looking to do? Um, well, e-bikes is at the top, cycling and e-bikes, hiking, trekking, walking is still there, wildlife viewing. We have that gastronomy, which is perfect for Asia and, and, and Mekong, right? with so many different gastronomic options for people to choose from. Um, cycling again, cycling on mountains, cycling on road paved surfaces. You can see there's a lot of cycling actually that's getting very popular. Again, I think that's kind of triggered by the pandemic. Even if you look at a country like Indonesia, um, cycling became very popular as a hobby for people to get out from their homes and get around without having to get on public transport. And we can see that um, still really impacting adventure travel um, now and those kind of choices that travelers are choosing. Um, if we compare this compared to 2020, um, what are the differences? Well, we really saw, I say, e-bikes really increasing in popularity. You can see that so the green means an increase in popularity. Um, we've seen some other ones kind of popping up that are very new. So um, culinary gastronomy has increased. We have things like snowshoeing, which has really increased. And that's like a new entry completely. Um Maybe not so great for the for the Mekong and not so many snowshoeing opportunities, but there's plenty rafting, paragliding. These are all options that that Mekong has. Um, and again, you can see just that hiking, trekking, walking. Number two last year was number one. So it's always up there in terms of popularity. How about top activities for the region for Asia? Um, number one is culture, hiking and trekking, cycling with e-bikes, rafting and then fishing. Um, so this is kind of interesting. And again, you can see culture coming number one. You look at the other regions, there's no culture for North America. That's not a, a, a top activity for North America. For Central America, yes, it's there. South America, no. Africa, yes, but number four. Europe, not at all. Um, Asia's number one. So that's really, I would say, Asia's USP is that unique culture, that really different um options for travelers particularly long-haul travelers where you know the 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 feeling of a destination is very different and even within the Mekong within Southeast Asia there are so many different um cultural experiences right there's, even within one country there's many different cultures many different aspects to that same country um, and I think that's that's really the unique thing that that Asia can offer how about in terms of hot trending destinations? Um, and with this, we have to remember that at the time that this survey went out, this was, you know, first quarter of this year, Asia was still pretty much closed, right? Southeast Asia was largely closed, I'd say, with the exception of Cambodia, which took that brave uh, decision to open in November. Uh, Thailand had its its test in did they even have testing go? I, I don't think they'd even launched testing, or maybe they had, and it was it was still in the early stages, but Essentially, there were lots of very limited ways to get into Southeast Asia, but extremely limited. Um, and as a result, you can see that Southeast Asia really wasn't one of those destinations people were looking to go to. They were looking for Mediterranean, US, Scandinavia, Caribbean, South America, and so on. But I would imagine that if and when the survey comes out next year, we're going to see Asia really rise up there because there is that pent up demand, right? People do want to travel to Southeast Asia, to Asia. Um, and it was just being held by, back by that practicality that they actually couldn't go. How about how, you know, how valuable is an adventure trip? So an average adventure travel trip last year was around $2,900, not excluding the airfare. So you can see that that's quite a significant chunk of money. Adventure travelers are not um, necessarily budget travelers. Um, Eight nights, an average trip. Again, that's a good amount of time that they're getting to know the destination, explore it, um, contribute to the local economy. Um, and what's quite interesting here is when we ask them about how much they are spending on, you know, local handicrafts or souvenirs, it's also quite a big amount as well, $238. Um, it's quite a, again, that's an amount that's, you know, going direct to the local economy. Um, we found 70% of that local trip was spent with local suppliers. Again, that's staying within the community, more or less. Um, so it is really beneficial. And we're finding that even coming out of the pandemic, that 
there is still this this same trend for adventure travel supporting local communities. And how has the adventure travel trade itself changed? Um, are there any trends? And I would say definitely there is this move towards more and more tour operators getting sustainability certification. Um, so travel life is one of the most popular ones. 45% of our tour operators who we interviewed have said that they're working towards a sustainability um, kind of certification. Now, that's a large number. That's a big shift. And those are also, you know, we've talked about how adventure travelers are the kind of travelers a destination needs. But, you know, adventure tour operators are also the kind of tourism businesses that governments need, that they are also thinking about that sustainability. They're driving that on a on a ground level. Um, and that's super important, too, because as they start to to push that agenda Everybody else in the supply chain also has to be held accountable as well. Um, and it's a very positive direction. Um, and in terms of what are the issues that are most important to tour operators, um, climate change, number one. Again, it's really that focus on sustainability. Um, and community, also very important wildlife protection. So again, it comes down to tourism operators adventure tour operators in particular are very concerned with the impact that they are having both on the environment and also on the local people um the the residents with the animals even um so they are very passionate about these and they're the kind of advocates that a destination should want and should support so what you know key takeaways can you take from this um going forward i mean the first as I keep saying again and again and again, adventure travel is really a driver for the economy. It contributes to you know, the preservation of not only the local nature, but also the local communities. And I think that that is so invaluable as we move forward and as you know, tourism businesses, um, destinations are really having this rethink about what should tourism be? Should it be this quality over quantity um, conversation? The next step to really think about is the fact that adventure travelers are super passionate about traveling again. Yes, you know, they are aware of COVID. I would argue that I think that that's becoming a bit less um, nowadays from, from what I have heard, um, you know, that that concern around hygiene. Yes, things need to be hygienic, but is that going to be a driving factor? Probably not, but they have incredibly high expectations around sustainability and destinations, businesses need to really take that into account when they're designing um, activities for them. And the last one is just the point I was just making, that the adventure travel trade as a whole really takes sustainability and the industry's contribution to the local economies and communities extremely seriously. And I would argue that, you know, as I keep saying, those are the kind of travelers, those are the kind of tourism businesses that a destination um, wants and needs as we move forward and as, as climate change becomes a, an ever greater threat. So with that, um, I would just love to say thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Catherine, for the opportunity to speak. Um, anything, you can get in touch with me um, at adventuretravel.biz. You can scan my QR code. There you go. And have a great rest of your afternoon. Thank you so much, everybody. Thanks. <laughs>